Hey. My God is amazing. My God is too. Your God is too. How cool is that? <laughs> well. Same God. Our God is amazing. We're going to have a little bit of fun this morning. And I think we should pray. So mighty God, we come before you this morning and we acknowledge you as King of Kings, Lord of Lords. You are amazing. We love you lots. And as we join together this morning, be with us, help us, and help us to be a help to the people around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Uh, we're going to start this morning with a few songs. Uh, I would invite you to stand <clears throat> and sing with us this morning. And I will make sure that I have the music and we'll be good to go. Thank you, Mr. Drummer Man. <laughs>
Psalm 100, verse 4 says, Enter his gates with praise and his halls with thanksgiving. The music team has safely led us into his halls. Um, we're safe. 
before the, our, our Father God. And as we begin to, to celebrate communion, we remember that we are here because of Jesus. We're not here in our own strength, our own abilities, our own talents, but because of Jesus. have been distributed at the beginning. I find these elements, this little container that uh, they come in, I think it were invented by the man who invented the Rubik's Cube, just to get into them as a, as a work of art. Communion was initiated by Jesus when at the Last Supper, he used the bread and the wine to represent his broken body on the cross that was to pay the debt that we owed for our sins before God. By taking the bread and taking the wine, we acknowledge that the gulf between God and mankind has been closed. The relationship that God always wanted with us has been re-established. Communion is therefore a blessing. His prodigal children are home again. When Adam and Eve broke the covenant with God by eating the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, our spiritual DNA was corrupted and that sin separated us from God. Although sinful humanity was no longer able to enter into the perfect relationship with God, he had given us an undertaking that he would never leave us or forsake us. We were the ones that left him. But through the great heroes of the Old Testament, Abraham, Isaac, Joseph, Moses, David, so on and so on, God continued to speak into the lives of his people. The children of Israel were given the laws, which involved the slaughters of animals and burnt offerings. This system worked only for a year. So as soon as you'd sacrificed your animals, your burnt offerings, you had to start thinking about next year's burnt offerings. And your burnt offering had to be the pick of the fruit, the best of the, in the herd. It had to be the best you could put before the king of kings. But God had a better idea. Jesus. God sent him into the world. We know from uh, John 3.16, God sent him into the world to, to be the, the, the centerpiece of uh, our redemption that we had a, 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 a person, a, a, a God in human form, to identify with, to, to celebrate with, to have confidence in. But when Jesus was con condemned to death, by crucifixion his enemies thought they had won a great victory but little did they know that this was the reason Jesus had been sent into the world 
when Jesus, our Lord, spoke those immortal words at the Last Supper, this is my body broken for you, and this is my blood spilt for you, he was saying that the burden of sin that prevented man and God communicating had been dealt with. The, the troubles that came through the separation of God and man were now long, no longer an issue. Our sin nature had been washed clean by his blood. His broken body overcame the issues of our broken bodies. The prophet Isaiah says it very succinctly. You, Lord, have taken all my griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried all my sorrows and pains. You were wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my guilt and iniquity. The chastisement needed for my peace and well-being was upon you, Jesus, and by your stripes I am healed and made whole. Please stand and in your own time, with reverence, take these elements and celebrate that you are a child of God. Father, we rejoice in our salvation. We rejoice that we are welcomed into the throne room of grace, that we are joint heirs with Jesus. Father, in the natural it's hard to comprehend, but in the spiritual we're overwhelmed by your generous and abundant nature, and we thank you for it in that wonderful name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Brian. That was awesome. And welcome to Abundant Life Mariba. My name's Gary, and I'll be helping to guide the next part of our service. We do have a few little announcements, but whilst we um, have our minds on the cross, I thought we might um, turn our attention to a spiritual act of worship where we give. And our giving is important. And I was thinking about giving and about communion this week and I thought, well, the two things kind of go together but the two things are actually really very different. And, and God started to, to speak to me and what he um, challenged me about was being too quick to, to try and look for similarities between Jesus dying on the cross and our response to that and the commandment that he gave us to give and our response to that. Because they are two very different things and, and, and they're separate. So um, this morning, we are saved by what Jesus did on the cross. 
And there's nothing that we can give or donate or do that can affect that, that can take it away, that can change it, that can replace it. Uh, we, we can't not have the cross and have giving and find ourselves in a right relationship with God because the way we get relationship with God is through the cross, not through putting money into the offering on a Sunday morning. And God made that really clear to me this week. He said, hey, why don't you tell the church that as well on Sunday? And in a way, that's actually really comforting because I don't always have very much to put in the, in the offering on a Sunday. And I don't want my salvation to, to hinge upon that because sometimes I just don't have very much. Sometimes I don't have anything. But at the same time, God said, just because you can be saved without giving doesn't mean that giving isn't important. And he said, if you read the Bible, and so I started reading the Bible, there's a whole lot of promises in the Bible that are all based, and, and it all start with us giving. And so God challenged me, and he said, yeah, you're saved but if your giving isn't in the right place, don't be condemned this morning. If, if you're a little bit like me and God's challenging you in the area of giving, don't be condemned. And, uh, but at the same time, be encouraged that God wants to unlock stuff in your life. And there's a whole heap of promises in the Bible that start with us giving. And when we give and when we do it in the right way, all of a sudden, there's these, these promises, there's these things, there's Things that will happen, that God will unlock stuff. Um, I often, when I'm talking about giving, talk about the alignment because uh, the the green stuff, the the money, that that's life. That's that's food. That's water. That's power. That's the things that we need to live. That's that that's our life and our livelihood. And when we say, "Look, God, actually, um, you are important enough." that part of our life and our livelihood we dedicate to you, um, God responds to that. And that makes perfect sense. Um, because if there was someone who, just think, if someone did that to you, say, oh, part of my life and my livelihood I invest in you, how, what would that mean to you? Well, how much more so for our God, our Father in heaven, who loves us so much, that he had a plan and he sent Jesus, his son, to die on us to bring us into that relationship. And so as we give this morning, um, just uh, think about that. And, and if your giving isn't in the place it should be, if God's challenging you this morning, ask him what you need to do to, to put that right and unlock uh, what God wants to do in your life. And, and let's align ourselves with him. And, and, uh, and let's be encouraged and let's give with great joy. And so we thank you, mighty God, for who you are. We thank you for what you did on the cross. And that our salvation isn't based on what we're giving this morning, but it's based on what you did for us at the cross and for, for who you are. And Jesus, for the fact that you not only died, but you rose again. And Lord, as we give this morning out of a response to, to what you have told us in the Bible, to, to your love for us and our love for you. Lord, take this uh, gift that we offer to you this morning as an expression of our love. And, and Lord, as you uh, respond to that, uh, help us uh, to be ones who can continue living in your blessing and continue to be ones who are seeking and doing our best to align with what you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wahoo. Now, we do have a few um, announcements this morning. Uh, there's a few people that um, have birthdays this week. And it's my job to embarrass them. I mean, pray for them this morning. Um, so we have Lily Nightingale, we have Ezekiel Watson, with Zeke here, hey, uh, and we have Lillian Stephen, 21 again Lillian. So um, 
If you're near one of these people, or even if you're not, and you want to be as we pray for them, uh, now is your opportunity to move and let's pray for these ones. Mighty God, we praise you, we thank you, and we pray with Lily and Ezekiel and Lillian this morning, and we just uh, thank you that as they celebrate their birthday, that they will know your hand upon their life, that as they perhaps look back at the year that's been, uh, that they will know and see your hand. And as they think about the year ahead, uh, mighty God, we just pray that you would just continue to lead them, guide them, bless them, and bring uh, an abundance uh, to their life. Uh, mighty God, as they celebrate this week, uh, Lord, let them do it with great joy. Um, and as they uh, gather, as they celebrate, Lord, uh, just uh, breathe upon them, bring uh, a great joy and, and blessing upon their celebration. And uh, Lord, let those around them be of great encouragement to them as they celebrate their birthday this week. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Whew. Very good. We've got a couple of anniversaries this week. We've got Jared and Rebecca and Donna and Brett Trebley. So... We'll pray with you, and we'll pray for Donna and Brett as well in their absence this morning. Mighty God, we thank you for marriage. Lord, and we, we thank you for Jared and Rebecca, and we thank you for Donna and Brett. And, and Lord, as uh, they uh, celebrate and uh, as uh, we celebrate with them and as we uh, pray for them right now, Lord, we just uh, pray that you would uh, continue uh, to invest uh, and help them to invest in each other. And Lord, as the relationship continues uh, to grow and, and uh, even get better and better day upon day, Lord, we just pray for uh, your blessing. And we know that uh, a marriage where uh, you are a, a key ingredient, uh, it just helps. And so, mighty God, we, we pray for uh, patience, we pray for blessing, and we pray for great increase in Jesus' name. Amen. We have some children in church this morning, and they're about to head out to children's church this morning. And I, I think I said that right. <clears throat> Let's pray for our kids as we release them to Children's Church. Mighty God, we thank you for our kids. I pray that uh, you will uh, be with them and be with the, the teachers this morning as they uh, have an awesome time. In Jesus' name, amen. And as we have an awesome time too, I guess. Hey, we're going to have an awesome time this morning? Amen. amen. All right. Uh, if you're online this morning, uh, I hope you're going to have a good time with us too. All right, let's go through a few little quick announcements. We have uh, next week's serving team is all, A-double-L. -L. Uh, so we obviously have an extra Sunday this month. Uh, so um, please connect and let's serve the house together. We have a few upcoming events. Uh, who knows where the Christmas hamper box is? That's right. It's just there. It's got a nice big blue ribbon on it. Um, and so there's envelopes. If you have uh, vouchers or monetary gifts, uh, you can put the envelopes in the offering. Um, or um, we have the lovely little box over there uh, for our Christmas hamper. It's for those who may not have a lot this Christmas. And so um, as a church, we do like to give, uh, share the blessing and, and be a blessing to those less fortunate in our community. All right, we have uh, evangelist Caitlin Rice uh, at the Royals uh, on oh, October 30th at 6 p.m. I thought it was tonight. Well, there you go. Um, alas, there is another week uh, before Caitlin is here. <clears throat> I'm sure I was talking to Lee this week and he was saying it was on Sunday. Never mind. Um, we'll, 
the flyer and the notices says it's on the 30th of October, so that's next Sunday at 6 p.m. at Royals. Uh, so um, really good opportunity to get along to that. We have the Hope Gathering on the 20th of November, that's next month, uh, coming up fast. Uh, all of the organisation is going quite well for that. Uh, it will be in Arnold Park. There's a flyer with details. Uh, if you do have questions or you're really keen to help out, uh, just come and see me after church and we'll um, see what um, ways you can best get involved with that. Uh, it's going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, there'll be food, music, uh, a message, and a whole bunch of fun hosted by Mariba Churches together, which means we should be there because we're part of that. Amen. So Arnold Park is the park that is next to the skate park and the police station on Walsh Street, um, just near Curcio's and the Mariba Sports Hall. Basically just head down that way a few blocks and it's on the left. Um, and it'll be pretty loud, so hopefully you'll find it pretty easily. Awesome. Fantastic. That was a great question. Um, we have the highly strung ukulele group birthday with a party and ukulele workshop on the 12th of November. Uh, we have a lovely yellow flyer here. If you want to see more information or get details, you can contact the uh, church office during the week um, to uh, sign up or get more information about that. Um, the ukulele group are awesome. Just ask Ruth. Uh, I think I might have exhausted my announcements. Did I forget anything? I'm not getting too many looks. Guess who's coming to dinner? Of course. Uh, okay, who knows what date guess who's coming to dinner is? Saturday, November 5th. Awesome. So glad that we have lots of switched on people or it's on the screen behind me. Okay, so uh, there are forms uh, for the guests who's coming to dinner. If you don't have one, uh, you can see Michelle, uh, Barbara Gallo. Uh, everyone should have one by now. If you've lost, if you had one but you've lost it, uh, come and uh, see Michelle as well. Uh, but the thing is, there is a due date, so there's a little bit of organisation that goes into the planning for this event. So we do need to know if you're coming by the 25th of October. That gives you two days. Oh, heaps of time, right? Um, so make sure you get those forms in. You can drop them in at the office. Um, you can give them to Michelle or Elizabeth. Uh, you can just sort it out, like, today, straight after church, um, and then it's all done and dusted and you don't have to worry about it tomorrow. Uh, and we can all guess who's coming to dinner. I'm going to invite Lillian up to get um, ready. We're going to have a little item this morning. Um, just before we have the word, Lillian's got an awesome song for us. Um, I will just help make sure that that works. Um, but in the meantime... Uh, I think we just need to have a quick word of prayer. We do have a senior pastor, uh, Daryl Ruse, who's away this week because he's in Borneo. Um, and he's uh, speaking over there this morning and connecting with uh, leaders and um, having a whole bunch of fun, no doubt. Uh, but I think we should pray with him and for him now as uh, we're gathered here. And we also have... Jojo, who's leaving and going home this week, so we're going to pray with you as well. Uh, you thought I'd forgotten, didn't you? Um, all right, so um, tell you what, let's pray for, for Daryl and Jojo. If you want to come up the front, we'll pray for you straight after we've, we've prayed for Daryl. Uh, mighty God, we thank you so much 
for our, our senior pastor, our, our apostle to our house, uh, Daryl, and, and Lord, as he's in Borneo, uh, we thank you so much uh, for the encouragement that all those folk over there are going to be to Daryl, and for the encouragement that Daryl is going to be to all of them. And, and Lord, as he speaks this morning, uh, Lord, just give him a, a great clarity that, that he can uh, speak and, and bring what you would have uh, for them to uh, really engage and encounter you this morning. Lord, we're, we're not just uh, praying for a little bit of encouragement, but we're praying that you'll move in great power in that place. And uh, Lord, even as uh, there's a, like a great rumbling and things are shifting, mighty God, that uh, you would use this opportunity uh, while Daryl is there to uh, break the things that need to be broken, to shift the things that need to be shifted, to uh, lift up those things that need to be lifted up and tear down those things that need to be torn down. And we uh, just pray as you give Daryl the wisdom to know uh, exactly which things might need to, to happen in, in which order, at what place, at what time, uh, that you would just uh, lead and guide him and that as your Holy Spirit uh, manifests in that place that you will have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Jojo, do you want to come up and we'll, we'll just pray for you as you're traveling and we know that you're been here for a short time and we just want to pray with you and encourage you. So, mighty God, we just thank you so much uh, for Jojo. We thank you for the time here. We thank you for relationships and, and friendships built. And uh, we pray that as uh, he travels and as he continues to be an encouragement to those around him, that you would go with him and go before him and go behind him. And that as you uh, rest upon him and, and his life, that you would just continue to bring a uh, great blessing uh, and allow him to be a great influence for you and your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. All right, let's um, turn Lillian on and have our item. Good morning, church. Lovely to be back up here again and giving you the word through song. And, uh, I'm sure that you'll enjoy the words. For Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling, calling, calling night and day, 
hand you with him if you just pray. He's calling for you, so don't turn away. Jesus is calling, calling, calling night and day. Jesus is calling, calling, calling night and day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you very much, Lillian. I'd now like to introduce uh, Phil Wormsley, who will be giving us the word this morning. Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Gary. Good to be here this morning. Uh, before I get started, I just got, got uh, want to talk a little bit about uh, the um, care, the care of the church. Um, as you'll notice, we've shifted the connections desk down the back here to make it just a little bit more accessible. Um, and there's a couple of cards there. We are redesigning the cards, but we haven't got the new ones printed out yet. But um, there are cards there. If you have never filled out a card um, with your details on, I'd encourage you to fill out your, your details. Or if you've changed your details in any way, um, fill out a change of details. There's also a care card there. So if you have a praise report, that something that God has done in your life, Write that down, and there's a box there, a little box that uh, to put that in. Uh, or if you have a prayer request, um, you, you know, and, and you want prayer for something, put that in the box as well. And there's also a place for comments. So if there's something that you can see that you want to comment on, do that on the card. So that's those uh, couple of cards there. I just want to mention that um, it's about care. Okay, it's not about checking up on people you know, and, and um, making sure that people are doing the right thing. Okay, it's not about that at, at all. It's about care. And if, if somebody gives you a phone call through the week, it's not checking up, why weren't you here on Sunday or, you know, what's going on? It's we care for you and uh, just wondering whether everything is okay. So just keep that in mind um, as far as care is concerned. This morning I've entitled this message, A People of Passion. And um, just like to open in prayer. Father, we just thank you this morning for the God that you are, a God who uh, loves us so dearly, who, who uh, is at work in our lives and bringing about his purpose in our lives. And so, Father, this morning we just... Thank you for the God that you are. And Father, we know that you are at work in our lives. Father, we thank you for your plan of redemption that we, we heard about uh, earlier on as we came around the table. We thank you for that plan of redemption. But we thank you also for our salvation, the fact that you reached out and touched our lives. And Father, this morning as we uh, come around the word and, and as we um, hear your word this morning, Father, May you just touch our lives in the way that you would have to touch our lives, that you would speak to us in your own special way. It may even be that still small voice in our lives, in our hearts, touching our lives. So, Father, um, just be here this morning as we, as we bring this word. And may um, everything that, that is not of you, Father, just fall away. But, Father... Uh, may your word speak to us and um, encourage us and strengthen us, everyone. So, Father, we just thank you for your word now in Jesus' name. Yes, a people of passion. Now, this has come out of, uh, of the fact that over the last couple of months, Jesus, God has been challenging me uh, about my passion. And I want us to reflect just for a moment. What are you passionate about? You know, I occasionally ask myself the same question. What am I passionate about? I had this thought at one time that I'm not really passionate about much. Uh, and I remember 
thinking, oh, I wish I was passionate about stuff. I felt that I was just cruising through life uh, without having much passion. I happened to mention this to Daryl one day. We were driving around in the car and his response was, Phil, that's not true. Uh, you only have to look at what you've accomplished on your block of land out there. What you have done there would not have happened if there was no passion involved. And it's true. When we bought the block, there was absolutely no infrastructure, no buildings, no piped water, no electricity. Uh, I used to make the comment, there was weeds and wallabies. And there still are weeds and wallabies. <laughs> yeah. But I have a passion to build stuff, to make stuff. I also have a passion to repair stuff that is broken, to make something, to take something that doesn't work and restore it to working condition. It doesn't always happen. I've got some things that are still not working uh, that I've tried to restore but uh, haven't been able to. So uh, I'm not fix everything, man. But my motto has always been, why buy when you can make it? And sometimes that's a bit of a hassle as well uh, because sometimes uh, I try and make things that I probably would have been far better off to go and buy. I love designing and, and printing things out on my 3D printer. You know, I, I want, I, I want a, a fitting of some sort and I go in and I design it in the, in the CAD program and then print it out. It, it gives me great satisfaction. Uh, we had a lady staying there that broke the clip on her... Her, that held a drawer shut and I designed and printed up this new clip for her. And when we were in PNG, you know, there was a lot of uh, limited resources. And um, so I would build stuff up there. And Jeanette really wanted this scroll saw. She badly wanted this scroll saw. So I thought we couldn't actually buy a scroll saw up there. I think we did actually go and, and have a look in some of the hardware stores, but there was no scroll saw up there. So I thought I would make one. So I had my welder and everything there and I, I welded up this scroll saw. And, and when it was finished, I clamped it to the bench and uh, it had this electric motor on and I started it up. Well, it was so out of balance that it almost brought the shed down. It, I'm sure it loosened every bolt and nail in the shed. <laughs> I'm not sure what the neighbours thought. Um, but... Uh, it wasn't balanced, and I never did actually get to, to put the balance weight on the other side of the, the, um, the, the crank to make it balanced, and uh, a friend or one of the workers for MAF thought, that would make a good seat, so I cut the scroll saw off and let him take it home and use it as a seat. However, I did build a wood lathe while I was in PNG, and uh, I still have that wood lathe and used it a lot in PNG, don't use it so much anymore but uh, I, it is still there. But, you know, I just love building stuff. And I have many unfinished projects. I have some of the hardware to build a CNC router. And one day, one day, I'll get to that and build a CNC router. I've got a lot of other projects too, like putting the tractor back together and the backhoe, as some of the men could see when they were out there the other night in the shed, which was a bit of plan B because... It, was raining. We were going to have it by the fire side. Sometimes uh, getting started is the hardest part of fulfilling a project and uh, there's a lot of hindrances that come along. But one of the things that God has been challenging me about is whether my passions are in line with his purpose. The purpose that he created me for is the passion that I have in line with who God created me to be. One of the big emphasis, and I know I've said this before, uh, of kingdom investors, now called kingdom initiatives, is finding what, God purpose, what God's purpose is for your life and walking in that purpose. They say that you will never know a sense of complete fulfillment in your life if you are not walking in and passionate about things that line up with the purpose that God created you for. So I've been asking God for my life. 
You know, what is your purpose for my life? And do I need to have a change of passion? Now, Jesus called his disciples from different walks of life. There were those that had a passion for, for fishing. Adrian can identify with it, with that. Where's Adrian? Over there. He was telling us about this, this big fish on, on Friday night. He was telling us about this big fish that he saw, and, and nobody else was looking, so he's really cranky about that, but it got away. <laughs> and, and it was a true story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, Jesus called these, these guys from different walks of life. They were fishermen. There was um, Matthew, who was a tax collector, obviously had a passion for counting beans. And there were others. But Jesus' plan was that they would have a change of passion. There wasn't something that changed overnight. But as those disciples spent time with Jesus, their passion changed. And of course, when Jesus went back uh, to be with the Father, uh, the Holy Spirit came. And so that empowered them to live the passion that uh, they had then for the Lord. Jesus told them that they would have a change of passion. That uh, he, he said that those were, while they were fishermen, they would become fishers of men. You know, Jesus himself was, full, uh, was passionate about fulfilling his purpose in life. Jesus said, I didn't come to do my own will, but I came to do the will of the Father, of my Father. And it was God's purpose to show the world that he loved his creation and his created beings through the life and purpose of his son, Jesus Christ. And I would like us to consider some things that we could be passionate about this morning. A passion for purpose, a passion for the kingdom, and a passion for the gospel. In Psalm 69, and Luke hasn't got this one, but um, David, King David said, or, or the psalmist David said, passion for your house has consumed me. David had a passion to know God. In Psalm 119, verse 15, it says, I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. David had a passion to know God. He had a passion to stand clean before him. He said, search my heart. A passion to know his precepts and commands. You know, he still had to fulfill his responsibility as the king. And there were times when he failed God. But his passion for God was seen in his everyday life. And it was recorded for us for our benefit. So that we could see that passion and be uh, encouraged to uh, want that same passion that David had for his Lord, for, for God. So are you, pass uh, are you passionate or are you passive? What led to Peter's denial of the Lord? You know, Jesus said to his disciples, and we read this in Luke chapter 22, verse 31. He said to his disciples, Satan has asked to sift each one of you like wheat, but I have pleaded in prayer for you. Uh, and he was talking to Simon. He said, I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith would not fail, so that when you have repented and turn to me again, strengthen your brothers. Jesus knew Peter would fail. And the Lord was warning Simon Peter that uh, of what was going to happen. But you know, Peter did not take the warning seriously. And when Jesus was arrested, Peter followed at a difference, at a distance, sorry. Because he had not taken the warning seriously, he was unprepared for the attack when the enemy brought it along. 
And you know, if any one of us assume that we will not fall or fail, then we will be unprepared for the attack of the enemy when it comes. When the pressures of life are on, it's easy to forget that your f first commitment is to the Lord Jesus and always should be. And Peter even denied being one of Jesus' followers. And when the Lord looked at Peter uh, when he was there um, that night and it enabled Peter to remember the Lord's words where Jesus had said to him, you will deny me. And Peter said, no, not me. I won't deny her. The others might, but not me. So he remembered those words and he went out and he wept and he repented for, for what he had done. You know, Jesus had prophesied over Peter's life that he would become a strong part of the discipleship team. Someone who could strengthen his fellow disciples. And this would become part of Peter's purpose, his purpose in life. So, firstly, we can have a passion for purpose. Paul says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's found in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. And Paul could be describing the Christian here as a marksman, someone who is aiming at the mark or aiming to hit the goal. You know, I haven't spent much time in shooting ranges, but um, North Point Church ran a combined church's Big Boys Day Out. Anyone here went to Big Boys Day Out? Tim, you went there? Gary? No? I'm the only one. I went to Big Boys Day Out. Um, and they, were diff they organised different activities uh, for the big boys. Uh, there was many things. There was sort of like water skiing, paintballing, abseiling, shooting, uh, and a whole lot of, uh, of other things. And you had a choice of a couple. And they ran, they ran a session in the morning, and then they swapped. And so you could pick two, and, and you'd do, you could do those two. Um, so I picked paintballing and abseiling. Uh, the paintballing session did give me a little bit of appreciation of what it might have been like for the for those um, soldiers in the trenches um, during the war. There was paintballs um, whizzing all around. And if you put your head up, more than likely you cop a paintball in the head. Only for those in the trenches, uh, they weren't paintballs. They were real bullets. However, my claim to fame was that I did manage to knock off one of the people in the fort which was holding our flag. It took some doing. He, he, he kept stepping in behind the, the, um, the barrier, the protection barrier, but every now and again he came out, so I persevered, and I finally got him. I managed to pick him off. What I didn't realise, that was he was one of my own team members <laughs> who had just managed to get into the enemy fort to capture the flag. He did this while I was shifting position to get a bit of better position where I could, could uh, see through the door uh, a, little, a little bit better. As you can imagine, my fame and popularity went to a new level, <laughs> all down. <laughs> uh, there were not enough people for the abseiling session, so I, de I was delegated to the shooting range. And uh, although I've not done much in the way of shooting, I thought, how hard can this be? You know, I have handled, I have handled a rifle and, and that sort of thing uh, a, num a few times. But all you've got to do is you've got to line up those two sights with the target and pull the trigger. You know, how hard can that be? Um, the guy keeping tags on the tar target kept informing me that there were no holes in the target. I reckon that I must have got the gun that had been dropped and the sights had been twisted. Or, or maybe it's like those air rifles at the show. I'm sure they put a little bit of a bend in the barrel when you're uh, shooting the ducks. 
Um, I did eventually manage to hit the target, and I'm sure that every bullet after that must have gone through the same hole. Because <laughs> there were no new ones. What made it even worse is that I uh, had gone with one of my sons, and he seemed to be doing really well. Um, I can't remember which one, probably uh, was one of those things I subconsciously wanted to block out. Uh, and it was probably with the same gun. But I guess in Paul's day, hitting the mark might have been with a, a bow and arrow, uh, which probably required a bit more skill than even using a gun. It would re have required a lot of focus, a lot of perseverance, a lot of patience and practice. A true marksman, uh, and I read this somewhere, a true marksman knows that even taking a breath at the wrong time could distract you enough that you miss the mark. So Paul is saying you need to have a focus on hitting the mark or reaching the goal. He says, I haven't made it yet, but I'm doing what I need to do uh, to focus on making it to the goal. He says, forget the past. And you know, some of us have difficulty forgetting the past. Stuff that has happened to us over the years, stuff that is distracting us from being able to focus on moving forward, moving forward into the purpose that God has, has for us. It may even be stuff that we've pushed out of our minds, but it is stuff that has shaped our lives and is still affecting us. It may be stuff that is causing spiritual blindness or unbelief in our lives, and we need to deal with that stuff in our lives. You may even need help to be set completely free. It is Jesus that sets you free. It is the work of his spirit in your life. But sometimes you need help in recognizing the stuff that needs to be processed. You know, there are ministries that help people work through stuff like that. Stuff that is in our past and affecting our future. And we as a leadership team would like to see people trained up here on the table end uh, to help uh, others deal with these spiritual issues. And we're, we're working towards that. You know, Paul the Apostle reflects on his past. He says there was stuff that he was once proud of, stuff that he thought was valuable. The fact that he was once a zealous follower of the law. He was doing everything that the religious leaders of the day thought that you needed to do. But then Paul, who was then Saul, met Jesus and had an encounter with him. And it changed his life. And now he realized that all that religious stuff was keep him, keep, keeping him from even moving towards the goal, let alone reaching it. And God changed his pa passion and his purpose. And we were discussing um, at Ross and Michelle's life group the other night, uh, the law and the commandments, and uh, asking the question, was the law and commandments still relevant today? Well, Paul says that the law is good because it shows that we can never make the grade through the law. We all fall short, and it shows us that, that we all fall, sh fall short. And it makes us realize that there must be another way. And that way is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you are here or watching online this morning, I want to say to you that it doesn't matter how much good you do, how much you go to church, how much you help the poor, even how much you live a moral and upright life, or how much you try to do what is right. You can never pull yourself out of the kingdom of darkness. You need an encounter with Jesus. He's the one who loves you. 
He paid the penalty for your sin by shedding his blood and dying and taking your place. If you have never had an encounter with Jesus and asked him to come into your life, then I would encourage you to do that now. To ask him to come into your life and make you part of his family. Confess that you are a sinner and realize that you cannot make the grade. Thank him for dying for you and paying the price, the debt for your sin. And ask him to bring you into his family. And he will do it. He will do it. And that will be the beginning of a new life. The Bible says that you will have become a new creation. This is the start of finding out what is the purpose that God has created you for. God has marked out a destiny for your life. All you need to do is accept it and walk into it. Ask God to give you a passion for the purpose that he has for you. Because without a passion, uh, you will not be fully fulfilled in that purpose. So, a passion for purpose. Also, we could have a passion for the kingdom of God. When Jesus came to earth, he was, he was the one through whom the kingdom of God was brought back onto the earth. Jesus said while he was here that the kingdom of God was near and it was through his dying and his bloodshed that God's creation could come back into a relationship with God and become part of his family and the kingdom of God on earth. So God is building his kingdom. Jesus took back the keys to building the kingdom of God on the earth. And God is passionate about building his kingdom. He says that he wants us to be part of that building process on earth. In Matthew, when Jesus gave the commission to his, follow, his followers, which include you and I, he says, go into all the world and proclaim the kingdom of God. Show them the love of God, which he has shown to us. And tell everyone everywhere the good news, the good news about Jesus and what he has done for them so that God can draw them into the kingdom. You know, I'm asking God to give me a greater passion to see the lost brought into the kingdom of God and to see those who do not know God come to know him and to trust Jesus. So a passion for the kingdom of God. We also could have a, a passion for the gospel. And this ties in already with what I've said. And um, I'll just forget the name of the guy that, that, wrote, that writes a um, devotional. And um, some of this that I have here was one of his devotions. Elstrom, I think his name is. The gospel, we are to believe it, preach it, impart it, labor in it, communicate it, and seek to further the gospel. We are to defend it, confirm the gospel, serve in it, uh, suffer for the gospel. We may even lose our lives for the sake of the gospel, but we are to make known the mystery of the gospel, which is Jesus Christ and what he has done and who he is. We are te to testify to the gospel, be separated unto the gospel, ministered, shared, confessed and obeyed. That's what the gospel is. Our conduct is to be worthy of the gospel. We are to be established according to the gospel. We are to be straightforward about the truth of the gospel as we share what the gospel is to those that are around us, that that gospel can have an impact on their lives. We've been trusted with the gospel. 
We have our fellowship in the gospel and we come into the fullness of the blessings of the gospel and also uh, have sons and daughters through the gospel as people come to know Jesus. If you look at your feet, it tells us there in Ephesians that they are shod with the preparation of the feet. Hopefully they're not dirty. Yeah. <laughs> Our feet are, be sh are to be shod with the preparation of the gospel. We are to be careful to never hinder, be ashamed of, or turn away from the gospel or the power of the gospel. We're not to abuse our authority in it, pervert it, or ever preach another gospel. There were those in the early church that, that Paul said that they were teaching another gospel. It was a gospel that they hadn't presented. And there are many today that have another gospel. But we are to preach the gospel that we know that is in God's word. And it's a glorious gospel, an everlasting gospel of Christ. It's a gospel of peace, and it's a gospel of our salvation. It is the good news, the light, and the power of God for your salvation. You know, God designed us to be passionate. He designed us to be a people of passion, a passion to pursue God, a passion to overcome a people who stand by faith faith in the word of God not in our circumstances not even what our circumstances are telling us a people who do not entertain any unbelief and we sang that song God will work all things out for our good do we believe that do we believe what he says can we rejoice in every circumstance because we know that he has a whole lot of good coming our way? You know, we, it, it's very easy to um, sort of like feel overwhelmed by the circumstances of life that are happening to us and to not have that understanding of, God, you are going to make something out of this purpose for my good. So we can rejoice in every circumstance. Just ask the music team to come back this morning uh, to sing a final song. But where do you stand this morning as a, per, per, um, as a person of passion? Are you passionate about finding the purpose that God has for you, your life's purpose and walking in it? Are you passionate about fulfilling that purpose that he created for you? God's design for your life is that you would be very unique as you. God has given you special talents and abilities. Do you thank God every day for who he has made you to be, for who you are? Or do you sometimes wish... Oh, I wish I could be like so-and-so. I wish I could be someone else. I wish I could do this. You know, that is a lie of the devil. And we need to renounce that lie and accept and love being the person that God has created us to be. And it will not be until we fully accept who we are, who God has created us to be, that we can begin to find what is God's purpose for our lives? Are you passionate about the kingdom of God? About having the same heart of love as our Heavenly Father as for those who do not know Jesus and are not yet part of the kingdom of God? Are you passionate about knowing Jesus? If we are passionate about knowing God and 
having a relationship with him, then we'll be like King David who loved to spend time in his word, learning his ways and commands. That's Psalm 119. Um, where, you know, he says, I just love to know God's commands, to know his precepts or what he wants. You know, just because you've been introduced to someone doesn't mean that you know them. To get to know them, you truly need to spend time with them. To find out what they love. What what are they passionate about? And it's the same with getting to know God. We need to spend time with Him. Finding out what His promises are for us. Finding out what He has for us. Learning to trust Him. Are you passionate about the gospel of Jesus Christ, of being involved in it, being part of that gospel? As I have said, I am crying out to God to fill and increase my passion for the purpose that God has created me for. And you know, as part of that, I need to be prepared that some things may need to change. There's the old saying, if we keep doing the same, we can keep doing the same thing and and expect something different to eventuate. And it's not going to happen. Some things we may need to change. You know, God is at work in each one of our lives. And he is continually leading and shaping your life. All he needs from you is a willingness on your part to be part of that process. So, Father, we just thank you this morning that you are a God who loves every one of us. We thank you this morning that you are at work in our lives. And, Father, we are crying out to you to just show us, to give us a revelation of that destiny that you created for each one of our lives. And, Father, just show us uh, the pathway to that destiny. And, And, Father, we just ask that... You would fill our hearts with a passion, a passion to honour you, to walk in that way and to uh, fulfil that purpose that you have for each one of us. So, Father, we just thank you for for the fact that you are the one that wants this for our lives far more than we do. And so, Father, we just uh, come to you and, and ask that you might just do that work in our lives. We sang before, do whatever it takes. Do what you need to do in our lives to bring us to be the people that you want us to be. So, Father, we thank you this morning as we come to the close of this service. We thank you that your hand is on our lives. And we know, we know, oh God, that you are working everything for our good. And so, Father, we want to trust you. We want to trust you. So, Father, thank you this morning. Thank you. And the um, the team is going to lead us in a, a final song. And, and that will be the close of the service. And you're free to go outside and to enjoy a cup of tea. But if you need prayer, even a prayer of encouragement in your journey, in your journey. If you uh, just want to come and and pray for a a greater passion for the things of God, a greater passion uh, for the purpose that God has created you for, I invite you to come uh, and I just ask uh, Pastor David and Elizabeth to stay back and Jeanette and myself will be here. If you need prayer, just come to the front and we just love to pray with you. But may God bless you keep you. May his face shine upon you. May his peace rest on you. And may your way uh, just be one of being blessed. So declare that blessing and favor over your lives. In whatever you do this week, go and be blessed in Jesus' name. Thanks, Tim.